Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of our In Your House, episode two, and we are In Your House 7. Good friends, better enemies. I'm your host, John Scott, and welcome to another Watch Along, going on our retrospective series here for all things In Your House, and uh, I want to encourage everybody to uh, fire up their WWE network, Head to WWF In Your House 7, Good Friends, Better Enemies. And our timer and marker you want to go for in this one is 39 minutes, 40 seconds. That's 39 minutes, 40 seconds, because we're not actually doing the main event on this one. We are doing, I said on our first episode, I would be choosing some obscure matches, matches that don't often get spoken about. And we're going to be covering Razor Ramon up against Vader. So um, the time again, folks, hit the pause button on the podcast while you find that. The time you want to get to is 39 minutes and 40 seconds. And then on the count of three, we are going to go ahead and click. Oh, sorry, should I say on the count of one, we are going to go ahead and uh, begin the show. So... Again, 39 minutes, 40 seconds, 3, 2, 1. And you should get an opening with uh, Jerry Lawler, with the amazing commentator that then was Vince McMahon, um, who obviously, (laughs) very, very iconic um, as an announcer, no doubt about that, that's for sure, um, in this this time and period. As we see... Um, big Van Vader, or not Van Vader here, he's just Vader with the iconic music, love this music by the way, coming out with Jim Cornette, one of my most uh, favourite wrestling managers, play by play, I mean you name it, this guy's done it and still still to this day, still doing his own podcast, one of the best uh, talkers in the business, no doubt about it, Jim Cornette with that tennis racket. And as we see Vader, now, um, just to give you some perspective of where we are in the timeline here, this is 1996, April 28th, and uh, you'll remember that pretty much Vader is uh, he's, he's coming in new, he's very fresh, and um, this is a big acquisition here for WWE. Now, at the same time, his opponent, as we see some clips here, this is like um this has been an ongoing feud. Remember what I said about on the last episode about overlapping storylines, how good they were at doing that back in these years. This is another perfect example of that. Um but basically um he's up against Razor Ramon who um for all intensive purposes he, this is going to be his last show. Uh him and Kevin are both going to wind up in July of this same year um heading on over to WCW and starting of course the uh, infamous NWO. So this is like Razor Ramon's last kind of big pay-per-view outing here in this match. And he's, you know, they obviously want him to, uh, they obviously want to have him against the new guy that they brought in from WCW in the form of Vader. This is, um, on paper, this is a match that I, I really if I've seen this, I certainly don't remember it. Um, I have got the tape of these, of course, all of these. But this is one of those ones that I was flicking through and I thought, hmm, let's see what this is about. Now, I have absolutely no idea what the match quality of is here and maybe I should have checked this. But I think part of the fun of doing the watch-along on In Your House is that we can... Uh, look at that pyro there. Amazing stuff, eh? Um is that we can kind of experience maybe the good, the bad, and the ugly at the same time. But certainly on paper, this this, is, this should be pretty cool. Uh, just to give you some other backgrounds about this event then. So this is In Your House. This was headlined by um, Big Daddy Cool Diesel and Shawn Michaels. Again, Diesel obviously leaving after this pay-per-view. So this was sort of a goodbye to both those guys in terms of the pay-per-view. Interesting poster just there. Um Obviously, everybody knows Vader, one of my most uh, favourite wrestlers in general. I loved the whole Big Van Vader gimmick from Japan and then in WCW. And I suppose we'll talk about it during this match, but I definitely feel this guy was underutilised in WWE 
for uh, probably politics as uh, Razor throws the uh, the toothpick at uh, Jim Cornette as we're about to get into this. But to give you guys some uh, some background, so this um, obviously April twenty eighth, nineteen ninety six. I try and give like more facts on these things. Last time I don't think I've done enough, but just to give you some representation for those people that really liked the numbers and the money back then WWF earned 120,000 uh, 668 in ticket revenue with the attendance of 9,563 so um, we'll talk about that more because this is a time where the climate um, in terms of money and finance certainly wasn't at its best and unfortunately I would say that when um you know Nash and Hall show up at uh, WCW things are about to get a whole lot worse for the WWF as well as we see this uh, nice opening like the power game here this is a good this is a good example of uh, you know you you're trying to get your fresh new guy over like Vader um and put him into the the limelight a bit here Again, Vader is um, Vader at this point. He's been built to be basically. I mean, this is coming after um, WrestleMania, the Iron Man match WrestleMania, right? So the story is, is how it's going to work. Is and and this is this is when WWF used to think long term. They are building Vader for a uh, a big matchup for SummerSlam, and he's going to go up against the champion um, Shawn Michaels. So that is, you know, this is probably the the start of it. So they're kind of trying to feed him, guys. And obviously there's an opportunity here. Um, next best to Kevin Nash would definitely be Scott Hall. So this, this kind of makes perfect example um, of doing that. If I would have had it, maybe I would have gone the other way around. Maybe I would have had um, Razor up against Shawn Michaels and do like a heel Razor maybe just for the night or, or maybe two baby faces but just to just because that iconic ladder match they had and just as a farewell and I would have had because Diesel was considered like the big top guy of big guys back then I would have had the new guy like this Vader come in and probably uh, get the rub on him to go forward but um, nonetheless they, they went a different way I mean, it was probably the whole babyface heel dynamic back then that probably didn't make that match possible, but that's how I would have booked this. Vader, um, certainly at this point, I think they had high hopes on this guy. There's no doubt about it. I mean, they were they fed him Razor here. They had Yokozuna, who was obviously going to be the next uh, big prized opponent, but... Um, I I don't know. I I really feel like a missed opportunity. Now, I remember last time, and those for you, those of you that didn't um, check out our last in your house, which was um, in your house twelve, um, which was much was the last pay per view of actually nineteen ninety six. Um, by this point, there was a pay per view, and it was called It's Time. Now that was already pre planned from here, so you can tell how far in advance they'd gone. And by that time, it, Vader should have been champion, but. Um, Obviously, as I spoke about last time, that wasn't to be. That was not the case to be. But uh, what I'm going to try and do with a lot of this... Um, whoa, nice there. Nice move there from uh, Vader. So agile, Razor, for a guy his size. You forget how tall he is because he's in there with Vader. But he's a, he's a tall guy. No doubt about that in his prime. Um, yeah, what I want to try and do with this, this series is to try and link it somehow, whether we're going backwards or forwards in the timeline just to link it on from each other so I'm going to try and I'm going to try and do that as best as I can I don't think it'll always be possible but I'm going to try and do it as best as I can don't forget guys um, I want to say thank you to everyone that's uh, contributed in giving me some match options and I'm going to try and take one of those for the next episode I do so that'll be cool um, and I'll give you a shout out if you've got any any matches that you think would be worth covering especially obscure matches that don't really get spoken about a lot um please drop me an email um i would love to uh to, to do that um at email at wrestleline.co.uk nice clothesline there from uh, razor 
what a loss having, I mean, WWF at this time must have been thinking, how are we going to cope with losing Nash and Hall, really? Because this roster was so thin at the time. Um, but the incredible thing about WWF is that they they always had like a the next batch to come up. It was just a matter of time, really. Um, the right circumstances to get it working. Uh, don't forget, guys, as well, I've had um, been having loads of guests on from the, the UK wrestling scene. Um, if you haven't checked them out already, we've had uh, Mariah May on, who's uh, one of the the rising stars, uh, female stars in the UK. You know, she's already had a WWE tryout, so young. Um, and also Adam Maxted as well. That guy, I'm telling you, he is, I can tell he's going to be signed, like, no two ways about it, mark my words. Um, check that interview out. It's so such a nice guy, very, very humble. Um I was always told like before I'd met him the first time in person, like to be a little bit wary of him or he's he might have an ego. But just goes to show you can't you can't judge a, a book by its cover because you know the whole Love Island thing and stuff like that and uh, really, really nice guy. Can't say enough good things. I mean, all my all my guests are nice. It's just sometimes you get these people on that you think have baggage, but they they really don't. Um, but yeah, other um, other interviews I've done. We've had RJ Singh on as well. We've had uh, thirteen ten owner on. We've had Turnbuckle TV's owner on. Um, Jack Torino, he's been on as well. been really cool to have uh all these guests i want to say thank you to everybody that's uh contributed to my show it's uh it's always a, a pleasure very very grateful in these uh in these times again everybody um part of doing the whole in your house gimmick and feature was the fact that the whole isolation situation at the moment and um, i'm sure uh, as many um emails as i get in there's a lot of people that Listen to the podcast when they're actually still working or or going to and from uh, work, which is um, which is great to hear. Like it's, it's nice. Like I get a lot of nice emails about how I'm, you know, keeping their day going, keeping their mood going, especially when I was doing the daily ones. I do kind of apologise because I can't. I I just at this point I'm I'm not able to do the daily podcast. It's just it would be too much, but. Um, yeah, it was good that I I got you through those those couple of weeks. I'm really really uh, you know humble, and if I could do more, trust me, I would, uh, guys. But I'm very very appreciative. Oh, close fall out. I thought that was it, you know. That mask of Vader's is just totally iconic. I mean, there's something about it when he's not wearing that. He really is something different and almost wrong. It's difficult to say what the best Vader is for me. I probably prefer the New Japan version with that huge bloody great thing he used to wear on top. But the music here, I would say WWE got just right. Um, very, very iconic. As we see now, Vader going up for that big, that big Vader bomb from the top. Not a lot of give to this stuff, I tell you. Oof. Amazing that that ropes never ever uh, give way. And Razor kicking out there. I think what's cool about this, as far as I was expecting, because of the situation, that it was going to be a bit of a squash. But they look like they had, uh, you know, maybe enough respect here for Razor to, to give him that last final. You know, they didn't completely bury him. It's been pretty uh, back and forth, I would say. But a good match. Actually... 